Hi, welcome to the Adopt a Rock House volunteer training hosted by the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves in partnership with the U.S. Forest Service. In this first video, we're going to go over the natural features and geology of the Red River Gorge. The Red River Gorge geological area is a canyon system located in east central Kentucky. It expands across Menifee, Powell, and Wolf counties. The gorge occurs within the Daniel Boone National Forest, a Kentucky national forest of over 2 million acres established in 1937. It was originally named the Cumberland Forest, but the name was officially changed by Lyndon B. Johnson in 1966 to the Daniel Boone National Forest, or the DBNF. The DBNF is divided into four ranger districts shown in the map on the bottom left, the Cumberland, London, Redburn, and Sturds district. The Red River Gorge geological area is located in the Cumberland Ranger District of the DBNF. The Red River Gorge geological area was established in 1937 and contains around 29,000 acres. It is shown here on the map on the right in orange. It has since been designated as a National Natural Landmark, a National Archaeological District, and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. There are many names that are used to refer to the Red River Gorge geological area, such as the Red River Gorge, the Gorge, and the Red. All of these names can be used interchangeably and are all referring to the same area. Running through the center of the Red River Gorge geological area is the Red River, designated as both a state wild river and a national wild and scenic river. The map on the right shows the boundaries of both within the Red River Gorge geological area. The light blue shows the wild and scenic river, which is a federal designation, and the red outline outlines the state designation of a wild river. Kentucky conserves the unique scenic fish and wildlife, botanical, geological, cultural, and recreational values of its most pristine rivers through the Wild Rivers Program. It was established by the Kentucky Wild Rivers Act of 1972 and is currently administered by the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves. The Wild Rivers Program protects these special places from unwise use and development. The National Wild and Scenic River System was created by Congress in 1968 to preserve certain rivers with outstanding natural, cultural, and recreational values in a free-flowing condition for the enjoyment of present and future generations. The U.S. Forest Service describes the Red River in the National Scenic and Wild Rivers Program as such. The Red River begins its long winding journey through a narrow, boulder-strewn ravine this 97.2 mile tributary to the Kentucky River flows through some of the state's most rugged but scenic landscape commonly known as the Red River Gorge. Sculpted by wind and water over millions of years, the terrain rises and falls. Towering sandstone cliff lines, steep forested ridges where unique rock features randomly appear. In the valleys below, creeks and streams ripple through densely shaded coves of hemlock trees and rhododendrons. Nestled in the heart of the Daniel Boone National Forest, the Red River and its surrounding area attracts thousands of outdoor recreation enthusiasts year round. Rock climbers, hikers, canoeists, and campers are just a few of those who come to enjoy and explore the gorge. More than 70 species of fish and 16 species of mussels occur in the Red River's free-flowing waters. The surrounding cliffs are home to white-haired goldenrod, Solidago albopilosa, a plant found only in the Red River Gorge region of eastern Kentucky. Formation of the Red River Gorge began about 300 million years ago, during the Paleozoic era, when the area was a shallow sea. Over a long period of time, sediments from the old Appalachian Mountains flowed to the present day location of the Red River Gorge geological area via rivers, eventually filling the shallow sea with quartz, sand, and gravels. The layering of sediments created immense weight and pressure, cementing them together into Corbin sandstone. This is the geological map of Kentucky made by the U.S. Geological Society in cooperation with the Kentucky Geological Society in 1988. This is a PDF available online if you are interested. 
To show where Corbin sandstone occurs in Kentucky, there is a roughly drawn red circle around the area in which Corbin sandstone can be found. It extends from Carter County around Grayson, Kentucky to the Southwest to McCreary County around Whitley City, Kentucky. Here's a county level view of the geology showing Menifee, Powell and Wolf County outlined in red. You can see the light blue sections with light purple dots are Corbin sandstone. The yellow circle is approximately the area of the Red River Gorge geological area, and you can see that a good portion of that area is Corbin sandstone. The second part of the formation of the gorge was the uplifting of the Cumberland Plateau. Around 285 million years ago, the Cumberland Plateau started to form. This extends from Kentucky to Tennessee, Georgia, all the way down to Alabama. The Red River Gorge and all the surrounding area in the Cumberland Plateau was slowly lifted over 2,000 feet above sea level. And as those layers came to the surface, they began to erode almost immediately and eventually formed over 3,000 miles of cliff line um, across the Daniel Boone National Forest alone. The texture of Corbin sandstone varies from fine to coarse grain and sometimes contains quartz pebbles in layers of sandstone conglomerate. In many places, the rock is solid, featureless, and thus unclimbable. The upper part of the Corbin sandstone especially tends to be of the solid and featureless variety, except where dissected by crack systems. In other places, the cliff line contains vertical bands of sandy, chossy breakdown. The best rock for climbing exists between the extremes of solid smooth and sandy choss, where the effects of weathering have created ideal features for climbing. You can see in this map that is just the Red River Gorge geological area geology that the purple blue colors are all of our Corbin sandstone. The high iron content of the Corbin sediments gives the cliffs and rock features an orange coloration. Groundwater percolates through the rock and as it dissolves, it precipitates iron and other minerals. This mineral precipitation tends to occur in thin layers of finer grain sediments, resulting in the dark edges where softer material has weathered away and left dark vertical plates. The weathering of the softer bedrock at the base of Corbin sandstone has resulted in the creation of overhangs, arches, and rock shelters. On the left, this drawing is a cross section of a typical ridge to valley habitat profile in the Red River Gorge, starting at the top from sandstone ridges going down through limestone and into the riparian area. At the top of the ridge, we have our more erosion resistant sandstone. But as we travel down the slope, the sandstone becomes less resistant to erosion and the development of rock houses, overhangs and arches occurs. There tends to be a sandstone boulder field on the lower sandstone slopes, which are formed as chunks of the sandstone break away and tumble down slope due to the ever expanding cracks in the ridge. Below the sandstone layer, a limestone layer emerges. Limestone in this area tends to have caves that were formed long ago by dissolution. Once full of water, the caves are now dry as the river valleys have been deepened by erosion and the water table has subsequently dropped. So as you can see here, we can see kind of the beginnings of a, an arch being formed. You can see above in this arch is a harder sandstone that has not eroded away yet. But at the bottom here, we get this sandy base and we could see an arch just barely starting to form because that sandstone there must be a little less erosion resistant than the rest of the arch. The last topic we'll cover in this video is how we define a rock house and the general anatomy of a rock house. And it's important when surveying a rock house to be able to define the survey area. A rock house has four distinct parts, the floor, the back wall, the ceiling, and the drip line. The ceiling is the highest at the edge of the rock house and slopes downward to meet the back wall. When it rains or if there is a stream located above, the highest part of the ceiling at the edge of the rock house will have water drip down to the drip line. The back wall. The back wall is the darkest and farthest back part of the rock house, usually with some degree of moisture due to groundwater seepage. 
the floor. The floor consists of sandy soils and boulders extending from the base of the back wall to the drip line. And finally, the drip line. The drip line forms where water and runoff sediment fall from the outermost edge of the ceiling. Leaf litter often accumulates here. So you can see we have a diagram on the left of a rock house and all of its parts. And on the right, we included a picture to show a more real life version of this. You can see the ceiling coming you know, up you know, to the edge of the rock house, then slopes down to meet the back wall. The back wall is the darkest part of the rock house. It meets the floor. We have a nice boulder field, lots of sandy soil on the floor. And then as we come towards the outside of the rock house, away from the back wall, we get to the drip line. And you can see there's almost a hard line um, at the drip line where you go from sandy soils to leaf litter. And that's because the ceiling has protected the rock house and is preventing that leaf litter and you know, other moisture precipitation and other things from entering into the rock house.